Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another one of my uh, lights, lens, uh, waffles, um, ramblings, whatever you like to call them. Um, although this isn't actually a, a Leica ramble, it's a, it's a light lens ramble, because the lenses, as far as I know, um, always carried the, uh, the lights name rather than the Leica name. And this is just going to be a sort of a quick look at some of the uh, the lenses that were produced by the company over the years and it will only feature lenses that I actually possess and I can show you so there'll be emissions but they are deliberate em emissions because um, I simply don't have one so I would like to start off with the uh, the uh, earliest Elmar lens that I have the the Elmar has been around for a long long time and in some respects um, it was the sort of the I don't know the default lens uh, or if you like the standard lens that came with a Leica um, the the faster f2s like the the Sumar and the Summitar and the um, Summicron they they were sort of optional extras really so so this is the well, I like to think about the, the, the sort of the, the standard lens. And the first one I want to show you is, is the oldest one. And you, you've seen these cameras before and you've seen these lenses before. But uh, we can just, what we're going to do is just have a little uh, closer look at them, that's all. And so we'll start with the one that's fitted to this uh, Leica 1A, which, as you can see, you probably can't see actually but this is a uh, the early Elmars were all finished in a nickel plate the bodies are made from brass and the early ones were nickel plated and the later ones were chrome plated this particular camera dates from 1930 so and I think it's a safe bet to say that the uh, the lens is of the same age as you can see it's uh, got the earlier setting for infinity up here at 11 o'clock. But it, in all intents and purposes, it's really the same as the removable Elmars. This one is um, calibrated in, well, it's marked in meters. And of course, there were imperial versions as well. No, the lenses didn't come marked in both, so you you either end up with a, a metric one or an imperial one marked in marked in feet. Compared to the later ones, the, the, other than the position of the infinity lock up here, which works in conjunction with this hockey stick, uh, the the appearance is no different. I don't think this one, and I don't think the early ones had a separate serial number. And as you can see, there's the, the um, I won't say unusual, but the, the, the f-stops are different. But they, they run from 18 down to 3.5. But we've got things like f9 and uh, 6.3 and so on. So that's the earliest one in my collection. And... I'll just put that camera there. All the information I'm going to give you is simply information that I've got of, um, by uh, doing online searches. And a lot of the information has actually has come from uh, Ken Rockwell's uh, site. Um, I don't know any uh, really a, a lot about these lenses. So, so it's all been, it's all information that... Um, anybody can find I'm not privileged to any sort of secrets about these lenses I'm just a you know a normal a, 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 whatever um, I'm, I'm just a normal human being I, I don't have access to uh, anything in the least bit special or and all the only reason I do these vlogs I mean to say this at the start but I'll say it now really it's for people who might be considering buying a Leica there are plenty of people out there who may be listening to this who know for, uh, who know far more about this than I do. But uh, I just like to have a, a sort of a casual chit-chat 
about things and in the hope that you know that they may be of interest to to uh, people and if you're maybe thinking or toying with the idea of uh, owning one this, this sort of information might be just vaguely interesting so let's go on to the next oldest one which is really the same except this one is removable but it's, it, it's in essence it's it's the same as the previous lens it's finished in nickel um, and this one this one is actually calibrated in feet so this lens which I do wonder if uh, this lens um, has always sat on this camera it would be nice to think it had actually uh, it, it was certainly bought with um, this lens on it and this this is the the Leica 2 which you've seen before and it's now been uh, returned uh, from um, Alan Starkey of uh, Camera Works UK up in, in, uh, in Lancashire um, he, he's replaced both shutter blinds and this window here has been replaced because the glass in the other one they've got a crack in it and it's now come back in in fine fettle and um, I've got a couple of photographs that I've printed off on plain A4 paper to uh, give you r roughly an idea of what it can do so um, give it a quick little glass so you can hear it that's uh, what's that we've got on yeah that's uh, it does feel nice and smooth when you wind on that was the slow um, slow one thirtieth of a second let's go a bit faster let's go up to a hundredth that feels nice and that wind on's uh, lovely and smooth um, but the the lens and I'll show you an example of what the uh, photograph of the taken with this very camera and this lens the, the lens is in, in essence it's the same as the other lens but the difference is though that the infinity is in the usual place I suppose where we tend to find these down here at at seven o'clock so just bear with me for a second because I'm going to sort out a couple of uh, photos taken Now, as I've said, I can only do this um, like so, but um, forgive the, odd, the unusual purple colour. And uh, there is an example of the photograph. I'll just move it a little bit and bring the camera in a little bit. And there's, I think it's fair to say it's a, the, the half decent uh, print that it's on it's on plain a4 paper um forgive the odd purple tinge i don't know what's ca causing that uh it's on plain paper a4 paper because i'm mean and i don't want to use any photo paper and it's printed on um a fairly well it, it's it, it's been printed from a normal printer uh hewlett packard printer that that and it's not a photo printer it's just a general purpose printer but it does have facilities for printing um photographs it's got a separate little holder for small ones but this is this is on the piece of a4 and that that's Bala high street and that was taken um only last week so um there's one And here taken in the same location is uh, it's an, is another one again on A4 paper and that's actually about the same position roughly but looking the other way I, I've taken these off um, the clipboard because it's it makes it a little bit easier to to see what's going on but if I can bring it right right in there's there's a, there's a nice lot of uh, Nice, nice lot of detail there 
Um, and uh, zoom into that little bit there, as it were. So uh, that was taken with that lens and that camera just uh, just last week. So there's the um, the earlier ones, and I'm going to move forward a little bit now to a later one. This I think this lens dates from probably about uh, well the the, the camera body is from uh, this this is a 3B. I've got film in this one. That's why it's got the light meter on. I'm actually using it. Uh, this one's um, the camera. The body dates from about not, I think it's 1938, and I suspect the lens is about the same age. Uh, it, it, it's one of those cameras. I think um, may well be one with its original lens. You can never be certain, but I've just got a hunch. That's all. And this is like the other two, um, an uncoated lens. And it's, it also has the f-stops in those sort of unusual uh, figures, I suppose. And this, this one is also in feet as well. But this one is chrome plated. It's, it's got a chrome finish as opposed to the nickel finish. And um, a little bit about the lenses themselves, which I've uh, got from, as I say, my, mainly um, Ken Rockwell. The the the, the Elmars, the, the F three five Elmars, were available from about nineteen thirty until nineteen fifty nine. They were based on an earlier lens called the uh, L Max, and the EL comes from uh, Ernest Lights, and the Max bit comes from Max Berwick. I can't actually find very much about the early versions, and uh, the only thing I could find is that they have got uh, at least what I I could find. It was five elements, but it, it didn't mention how they were grouped the uh, elmar is um four elements and those four elements are in three groups and so it it, it it's claimed that it's based really on the uh, the cook triplet which are an awful lot of lenses where but ken rockwell um said it's not based on a tessar design Although the Tessar and the Elmar might have some similar DNA somewhere along the line, but he, he, he states it's, uh, it's not a Tessar design, and some people state that it is. So I'll leave you to work that one out. I, I'm inclined to think it probably isn't. Uh, um, and there's, uh, there were about um, 35,000 of these lenses made. Now, while we're on the subject, while I'm looking, uh, looking at my notes, it's well worth remembering that um, these lenses, uh, well, the cameras, were, were copied by Russians. And they come fitted with uh, a very similar looking lens. And in fact, uh, it's not unusual to see on... Um, internet auction sites uh, Russian copies of this lens which have been um, faked to look like genuine Elmars a lot of them are in really lurid colours and if you see one for sale and it's in the really lurid colour then well if you want a, an Elmar copy in a lurid colour then go ahead and buy it but um, that's not really my scene but you have to be careful sometimes because um, some of these people when they put them on internet auction sites and I'm thinking of one in particular but I'm not going to mention it um, they occasionally forget to 
uh, use the word copy or replica. And they often refer to them as a, a Zeiss stroke light stroke something else lens. And, and it's only until you look at the details uh, in, in great, it, the, the, the actual advert in greater detail where it says um, where, where it was sourced from, it will say Russia. But that's often the only case. So people could quite easily be taken in by these people who may not know that, uh, that there's a Russian version of these lenses. And I'm talking about ones that have had the original engraving removed or polished out and re-engraved to look like one of these. There are a few little telltales for a start off. Uh, if I can just get my uh, biro, th this, this bit here, there where the, if I can get this in focus, that little rim there if you look at that on these it, it, it's it's smooth on the face there's there's no no sort of ribbing if you look at the russian ones if you if you see one of these and it's got ribbing all around there um sort of a knurling for want of a better term it's um it's russian and it isn't a genuine light lens I don't think internally these were quite the same either. I think the some of the internal elements were maybe slightly different. I, I, I don't quote me on that, but I, I read somewhere that it's it's not an exact copy. But from the point of view of appearance, it's very very similar, and there are plenty of fake versions around. So if you see one, just here, this raised rim here. And it's got sort of knurling marks or ribbing on it. It's Russian. And uh, not that I'm saying you shouldn't buy it. If you see a Russian one that's been unmolested and still got the Russian marks on it, and you, you know you, you want to save a bit of money, then you know it, it, that that's that's okay. But I do get a bit annoyed when I see these for sale that have been re-engraved as Elmars and they're not. So that's my little. Well, it's not my little rant. It's a little warning that's just out, just on the side, really. So uh, that's the the third one we've looked at. And the only difference, really, between this one and the others is it's it's got this chrome finish on it. Now the the final one, which is on this uh, this three F, this three F dates from um, nineteen fifty. And this lens is different in so much that, as you can see, the 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 the, uh, the f stops are from 22 down to 3.5, but they are the more conventional figures. And this lens, it's it, it's coated. I think there's just a single coat on it. Um, and if I can just refer to my notes again. Um, somewhere I have written down when this took place and um, yeah about they were coated uh, from 1946 so if that's the case then it's an odd time to sort of coat lenses isn't it really I'd, I'd have thought they wouldn't have been doing that in the middle of the war well, that is towards the end of the war isn't it it's not it, yeah yeah it's just after the war isn't it and um but you know things were far from back to normal in 1946 but anyway this is when the factory started uh to to coat the lenses and at the same time they they introduced the the more conventional uh f-stop numbers so uh, that that and I I don't tend to take many color photographs with these cameras. Uh, the reason for that is because I like to develop um, my own negatives, and then I scan them to computer, and that's where they usually stay, unless there's one I particularly like, and then I will I will print it off. Uh, notice that purple tinge again. It's on the camera as well. 
that must be oh yeah i think i know what it is it's we've got um some very pale pink uh, vertical blinds in the dining room here and uh they're partly closed so that's the reason for that uh, tint on the camera looks quite i think it's quite attractive actually but uh, that's the reason <laughs> that's the reason why the print was uh got that tint to it as well uh apologies for that but anyway that that's the i i have taken um some color photos with this particular camera and this particular lens and they do look very very nice so i'll put that one back as well and there's a few oops a few more details that i've uh, got about these um the so i was surprised to learn that uh, these f35s this this type um were actually made up until i think it was uh 1959 i'm just trying to scan all my notes and as usual um because that surprised me a bit um but yeah I, th I think it's 59 if i'm wrong about that um i'll at some point i'll correct it in another upload but i think it was 59 which is interesting because the um the faster version of the elmar was also being made at the same time so either i've made a mistake or or, or somebody else has or alternatively um that, that's the case um, anyway, let's have a look at uh, a couple of other Elmars. I am rambling on a bit, and I don't want to make these uploads too too long because people start falling asleep. But the other, this is a, a later Elmar. This one came attached to my Leica M3. This is the uh, much later, the later one. This is this is a stop faster as well. It's. Uh, it's f28 and this was available with both a bayonet fitting which this one is it's it, it's it's an m fitting for a leica m camera and it, it it's that little bit faster the images from all of these lenses whether it be this one or the that, that they are they're very competent i mean that they, they're very nice images i can't say they've got any particular characteristics that um you know, I, I can point out to them, to you and say, oh, they, there's a certain characteristic like this and that and that. The, the older lenses, like all lights glass, they, they tend to give, uh, they don't tend to, the, the uncoated ones are prone a little bit to flare. The, but not, not that much, in my opinion. You just have to be a little bit careful where you point them. Uh, the, and, the, and this one uh, and the, older coated one I, I showed you that they're very competent with color as well um and there's not really a lot i can say about them in that sense because they, they just they're just nice lenses that, that, that they don't have any i, I don't think there's, there's any particular characteristics to them that, that the bokeh or anything like that uh some lenses some of the leica ones do for example the summit are uh use wide open it's got some swirly bokeh and it I quite like that. Other people don't like it, but I don't think the I can't say I've ever noticed any particular characteristic about these lenses other than their their competence. Um, so I'll just put that one back as well. And uh, finally, and I'm very ashamed. Uh, oh, the I should also point out that these the aperture on these is um which i will demonstrate these these got a click stop which um people who make um use these lenses for making videos don't particularly like which i can fully understand but uh they're there nevertheless whereas of course the aperture on the elmars i should have pointed this out uh, the aperture on these is this little 
little lever here which you move like so which um, that's a feature of all of the Elmars and you just got to be a bit careful that you don't put your thumb or whatever digit you happen to be using that you don't get it on the on the front element it, it's probably quite easy to do that I don't think I've ever done it but it, it's surprisingly actually I do most things but I don't think I can I can't remember doing that anyway um, and then one final Elmar this again is um, this came with the uh, Leica M3 again this is a, a bayonet fitting but this is the 90mm F4 Elmar incidentally the other Elmar I've just shown you um, is uh, that's uh, chromed brass and that's got 15 blades um, and I think um, yeah the, the that version the, um, the the F28 was made between 1957 and uh, 1974 and yeah 15 blades close focus is a meter as it is with the other lenses and uh, or 3.3 feet um, anyway uh, going on these notes I'm uh, I'm using uh, they're really all out of order I should have made a better job of this but uh, you know it's the usual incompetent way I do this which um, has sort of become par par for the course now but going back to this camera I must admit I've only ever used this once and that was on obviously on the the M3 and uh, it's um, an F4 and it's a, it's a 90 millimeter lens it's not very fast at uh, F4 but it's the, the only picture I took with it which again was in black and white um, it, it looked it looked a nice competent image you know uh, I should, I ought to um, get, uh, that's the aperture ring there, that, that's, that's not clicking, that's, uh, that's so, um, yeah, continuous, there's no click stops on that, um, it, it's, uh, it's I think it might have seen a bit of use this lens but optically it seems all right and I really need to um, get uh, I'd like to get another one of these a screw mount one uh, or I suppose I could get uh, just an, uh, a bayonet adapter and uh, do it like that but uh, yeah I should I should use I should try this lens out a little bit more and one of the other things that uh, I do intend to do, and I, I've got all the correct um, adapters to do this, is put some of these lenses on um, a digital camera. Um, well, we're coming up to nearly half an hour, so i just quickly say that uh, I have bought um, a Sony A7, and the only reason I bought a Sony A7, it's the original camera. It, it's the sort of the Mark I version, the original A7. The only reason I bought that, body only, um, is so that I can use these vintage lenses and I can see completely what the lens is doing. I can I can see down the edge of the lens what the edge performance is like, which of course you can't do when you're using micro four thirds or APS-C crop sensors. Uh, so if you're looking for a, a camera maybe just to use vintage lenses on, it might be worth considering that one. Um, I haven't bought it because it's a Sony. Um, I bought it because it's one of the least expensive full-frame uh, digital uh, cameras. Um, so let's uh, let's sum up then. I'm just going to have a, a really quick look at my notes. Uh, yeah, the F4 Elmo, which we just looked at, is actually available uh, in, in different versions. Um, in fact, I mean there are much newer ones than this one, but the, this type was from the from the fifties, and it was available as a collapsed version as well. Uh, it's got four 
four lenses in three groups. I'm talking about the f4 that we've just, the 90 mil that we've just looked at, and it's got a 27 degree angle of view. Um, and again, that'll close focus to uh, one, one meter. So uh, I think. I think that's it. Uh, yeah, oh, oh, going back to the, uh, yeah, I've just found my other bit of notes as well. Going back to the original Elmar, the uh, F35, it was actually available. Um, according to these notes, right up until 1961. Um, so uh, yeah I don't know whether that's right actually I thought I thought it would have gone off the market earlier than that uh, anyway that, that's once again that's proof of my total incompetence um, yeah interesting I don't think that's right um, so anyway that's all for now folks apologies for the uh, the ums and the ahs and the deciding my notes are wrong sort of thing. Uh, hmm, interesting though that. I, uh, I'm just, just checking to see if there's anything else of interest. Ah, oh, yeah, it, it, yeah, well, I've just realised, yeah, I've just decoded my notes, it's all right. The the um, the F35 that we looked at earlier, the, the, these versions you can see here, um, th there was a bayonet version available. Um, and as we know, the, M, the M3 camera came out in 1954. And the bayonet version of the early ones, the F35s, was made then so in other words i've never seen an m with an f35 lens on i almost admit not that i've gone looking but um the the bayonet version was in production between 54 and 1961 that's the bayonet version of the the f35 l mars yeah my notes in there make sense so anyway i hope you found that of a little bit of interest and uh oh before we go um i've got a couple of more images these were taken these were taken earlier on. These were taken with the the uh, the Leica three that I f featured um, a few weeks back, and uh, that um, that camera came uh, from a dealer body only. So um, I've uh, I put um, a Sumar f two lens on. So it's the Leica three. The one with the bright chrome, with the uh, with an F2 Samar on, and there's a few images that uh, I took with that uh, a few weeks back. That, that, these were taken at Budley at the uh, at the Seven Valley Railway. These are there's, that's Tor Valley in the distance, um, which is in a sort of a purple colour at the moment to. Um, in uh, conjunction with the celebrations for the uh, uh, the Queen's um, 70th year as on the throne and uh, there's a, a class 37 or is it it yeah I think it's a 37 and uh, a class 50 they were parked up at Beaudley. And there's um, a shot of uh, an orchid in the in the lounge. That's not the whole print. I, I I can't take the print right back to to show you more detail. But uh, that's the Sumar on the uh, the M the M um, uh, sorry on the uh, Leica three body. And uh, finally, I took this one. Up in the local wood, that that that's a tree trunk, and uh, you can see that the the Sumar is a very very capable uh, very capable lens as well. Uh, so I hope that um, demonstrate that uh, these lenses are 
quite good. Not the ideal way of demonstrating, I, I hasten to add, but uh, you know, it's uh, it, give, it does give you a, a good idea. So anyway, with that, ladies and gentlemen, I will bid you a good day. And um, w the next time I do one of these lens ones, um, we'll we we'll look at we'll look at the 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 F twos. We'll look at the uh, the Sumar, which I just shown you an example of a photograph taken with it and we look at the uh, the summitars and the uh, summicron and there's actually quite a might be a little interesting bit that uh, i'm not going to mention it now i'll mention it when i do the lenses actually but that's actually to do with the glass some experimental glass that lights used uh, to improve light transmission so um anyway i Take care. Um, sorry about all the ums and ahs and the general incompetence, but that's the way I do things. And uh, I will, uh, I will see you very soon. Well, I won't see you at all, but you know, you know, when I say that, I will reappear uh, in the not too distant future with hopefully something vaguely interesting about the the lights f2 lenses. So, again, um, thank you for your time. Thank you and welcome, incidentally, to. Uh, new subscribers I'm, I'm actually quite surprised that I'm still getting new subscribers because these all and I, I don't like listening to these I don't like listening to the sound of my own voice but I always I always get a prompt from YouTube when there's a, a new subscriber I'd like to welcome welcome all new subscribers so somebody there's one that you know, there's about 300 of you who seem to enjoy these but uh, anyway thank you and thank you for your comments as well and uh, I'll see you soon. Bye for now.